All right, so a couple of days ago, Meatball Ron, okay, or Rob, as Trump is now calling him apparently, made an attempt to launch his presidential campaign for 2024 and challenging Donald Trump in the Republican primary. It wasn't a great attempt. In fact, you know, even with the caveats that I gave you guys a couple of days ago where I said I'm not confident in the ability, the technological capabilities for something like Twitter to handle an event like this, I didn't even think that there was a chance it was going to be this bad, this much of a disaster, but it was just an absolute shit show from the jump. Okay, so I was trying to get into it. A bunch of other people that I was talking to at the time Time. we're trying to get into it we kept getting kicked from it it restarted it shut down a bunch of different times at one point Ron DeSantis himself just appeared to have left like left the the Twitter spaces you had all of this echoing that was going on with Elon mumbling about how the servers are melting down and they're overloaded it was just absolutely atrocious so we're gonna get into a little bit of that here with uh, a couple different highlights from how terrible this was and then I'm going to show you some of the uh, Trump responses to this situation and we're getting a little bit of a glimpse now at this point in terms of what this 2024 race is going to look like within the Republican primary and, you know, to say the least, it's going to be entertaining as fuck. So here we start off with Jordan Yule. He says, Ron DeSantis' Twitter Spaces campaign launch has so far featured several minutes of silence, random throat clearing, muffled commentary from Elon Musk about why Spaces isn't working, hosts, including DeSantis, just disappearing. And so let's just get a bit of a glimpse of this, okay? Now, I'm not altering this. I'm not doing anything to this. This is actually what it was like. This is an official campaign launch, okay? This is supposed to be like the thing that is giving Ron DeSantis Santis momentum going into a, a major fight with the, uh, you know, Republican incumbent, I guess, within the party or the overwhelming favorite. So let's listen to a little bit of this. Well, there's 392,000 people, Laura. All right, great. So let's see. So they just keep crashing, huh? Yeah, I think we've got a, just a massive number of people online, so it's um, servers are straining somewhat. Um, okay. So just a little bit of a taste, a little bit of a glimpse in there. I mean, again, like this is Elon Musk. This is a guy who is pretty much notorious at this point for lying about the capabilities of a lot of his companies, whether it's with like the self-driving capabilities of Tesla's or whatever the case may be. He constantly overhypes the abilities that a lot of his companies actually have. And it seems like the Ron DeSantis campaign or the people who are staffed within his potential administration just didn't really do much background work to make sure that Twitter was capable of doing something like this. I mean, they only had like a couple hundred thousand people in at one time and it was just shutting down and crashing over and over and over again it's like you should have anticipated this right this is a presidential campaign launch but even then it wasn't that impressive and one of the funniest parts about this was that at one point, I think it was either David Sachs, who was one of the co-hosts or questionnaires or whatever it may be, uh, alongside Elon Musk and Ron DeSantis, one of the things that they kept saying was that this was like some sort of like an unprecedented internet phenomenon that they managed to get 300,000 people in on one space at the internet at one time, just for audio, mind you, okay, no video associated with this, just audio, essentially doing what like radio has been doing for decades, all right, and they were talking about this as if this was some technological breakthrough, and then you just compare it to other platforms and other things that have happened recently. So here from uh, Morning Joe, MSNBC, they point out the uh, ratings. And keep in mind, this is peak audience numbers. The average, I think, during this DeSantis event had to have been something like 175, maybe 200K or something like that. But they say here, April the giraffe gives birth 1.2 million, okay, concurrent. And I'm guessing that also included video. Not sure why people wanted to watch that. But they say AOC plays video game Among Us with Hassan Piker on Twitch. That got 430K, okay? And that was just to play a video game with a random congressperson who's not even running for uh, president, okay? So that got like multiple times more than Ron DeSantis' announcement. BuzzFeed makes watermelon explode, 807K. Drake plays Fortnite, 628. Cristiano Ronaldo accidentally records himself in the sauna. So, I mean, again, first of all, it wasn't even that impressive. Second of all, it didn't even work. But even if it did work, you're talking about what? Maybe a couple hundred thousand people for a just audio platform and you're acting as if this is a revolutionary piece of technology. Okay, people on Twitch, people on YouTube, they do streaming where they have videos and audio 
And there's no problem with that to have a couple hundred thousand people within a stream. But Twitter seems to think failing at doing that, but managing to kind of pull it out in the end, at least to some degree, even though the entire event was a snooze fest and wasn't, you know, interesting or exciting or giving him any real momentum. That that was some sort of something to be like proud about, I guess. But we're going to get to some of the uh, cope responses from Ron DeSantis' uh, campaign and uh, Elon Musk as well here in a second. But now we get to the Trump portion of this. So we had a couple different posts here that he uh, put out on his Truth Social account. Honestly, I was hoping he would make his comeback to Twitter, but uh, he stuck over on Truth Social. Maybe it has something to do with the contract that he has with the investors, but um, let's just go ahead and look at some of the posts that he had. So this was basically comparing one of his rallies with what was happening on this uh, live streaming event or this live audio event on Twitter spaces. And so you're going to get to see a little bit more of how much of a catastrophic failure this event actually was. To be an American And I won't forget the men who died We are uh, kind of melting the servers And I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free to freedom and his willingness to put his money where his, his mouth is Upset the narrative, upset the narrative control, control and pose on us by, by our government Who gave that light to me and I gladly have uh, Governor DeSantis uh, make this up. Uh... Okay, I mean, again, obviously, I'm not a fan of Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis. I think their their policy agendas are absolutely atrocious. Honestly, I think that DeSantis is probably more dangerous in terms of him being more ideological and more probably effective in terms of passing legislation than Donald Trump. They're both pieces of shit, but you can't lie. Just within the, the Republican scope of what is going to appeal to their base of su uh, supporters and what is going to be, a, you know, a, any potential long shot that DeSantis has at taking down Trump, it's just not going to happen if this is the kind of stuff that you're up against, right? I mean, he is absolutely ruthless. And here's the thing is that DeSantis, whenever he takes like a mild pot shot at Donald Trump, you have this massive backlash from like the 30 to 40% of the Republican Party that is absolutely behind Trump. So it's like Ron DeSantis can't even launch a mild critique of Donald Trump without having a massive backlash to it. And Trump can say and do and post whatever the fuck he actually wants to in order to attack DeSantis. And we're going to get to an example here of some of the insane shit that he has been posting. But like, you know, it's a one way street here with what Donald Trump is allowed to get away with because of his history in, you know, the modern era of American politics versus what DeSantis can get away with, especially since one of the most the, the, the main selling points of the DeSantis campaign is that I'm Trump without the drama, basically. So he can't get in to that drama pool fully. And at the same time, Trump is stooping to all of these different lows. So here from uh, Trump, we got another post here. He says, well, the DeSantis Twitter launch is a disaster. His whole campaign will be a disaster. Watch. Okay, so that was just one post that he put out there. He also put out shit like this. So we got a SpaceX, I guess, vehicle or SpaceX, uh, you know, spaceship crashing into the ground. And uh, if you notice the uh, Jeb sort of inspired logo that was on top of that as well. I mean, the details here, man, now obviously Trump, the wash. Trump isn't making all of these, but, uh, you know, the people who are around him seem to know uh, what at least online communities want to see. Now, we also had, uh, you know, advertisements like this where I'm not going to play the entire thing, but like basically, you know, he's attacking Ron DeSantis for being like a knockoff sort of like off brand version of himself, of Donald Trump. And uh, so he's going to attack him on those lines. And uh, he's also put out a couple different advertisements attacking him on things like, you know, wanting to uh, gut Social Security and Medicare. And Ron DeSantis has come out and said that, uh, you know, Donald Trump seems to be drifting to the left. And it's like, okay, man, you can say that. But at the same time, you know, maybe that'll help you moderately within the Republican primary. But what Donald Trump is doing by not directly attacking Medicare and Social Security, okay, even though that is a more left wing position that he may or may not actually believe in, right, that's actually going to help him because that is a popular agenda item, right? So it's like Ron DeSantis is trying to double down. Same with the abortion issue. It's like Donald Trump is still insane on the abortion question, right? He's the guy who was responsible for appointing the Supreme Court justices who 
who overturned Roe v. Wade, but at the same time, Ron DeSantis is even to his right on the abortion issue, and so Ron DeSantis is going to try to weaponize that against Donald Trump to say that he's weak or that he's to the left of him, but it's like what Trump's position is, even though it's, you know, disastrously far right in and of its own self, it's still more popular among the American people, right? So, I mean, he's just kind of in like an impossible situation. I mean, this is why I say that DeSantis has absolutely no shot in this primary, and honestly, I kind of, you know, even though I absolutely despise Trump and what he stands for, I kind of appreciate him taking a uh, torch to Ron DeSantis's political career and ambitions. But we got another one here. So this was a clip where he did a straight to camera, again, attacking Rob DeSanctimonious. I don't know why he's calling him Rob now, but, you know, I kind of like it, actually. So here he is talking about Rob DeSanctimonious and his poll numbers. Rob DeSanctimonious and his poll numbers are dropping like a rock. I would almost be inclined to say these are record falls. The question, is Rob just young and experienced and naive, or more troubling, is he a fool who has no idea what the hell he's doing? We already have one of those in office. We don't need another one. We need MAGA. Make America great again. That's what we want. Make America great again. We have no choice. This is the last shot we've got at it. If we don't win this time, our country's in really big trouble. Thank you. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know what you do against that. I mean, listen, again, it, it, it it's kind of weird because it seems like in these clips that he's almost like doing this off the top of his head, but he's not. He's reading off of a script and doing a straight to camera here, but it sounds like he's doing this off the cuff. And I mean, he just has so much more of an entertainment value, like objectively. I've seen all of these clips that have been going around on Twitter, on YouTube, and the rest of it, of uh, Ron DeSantis doing some of his campaign stops, and it's just like a disaster. Like, dude has no charisma, no entertainment value. He, he's not good on a personal level interacting with people directly. I mean, there are all of these clips of him like doing these bizarre faces while he's laughing and uh, having interactions. There was one where some uh, politician from like North Dakota or something, I think, made this long hours long journey to go to a Ron DeSantis event and he meets him and uh, he's like, you know, I traveled all the way from here and uh, just to come and see you and Ron just looks at him and he's like, oh, cool, thanks. And then just like turns away. Like he doesn't have, he doesn't have that it factor that Trump seems to have over Republican voters in order to try to energize them and in order to try to actually build a sustainable following. He's kind of trying to play more of like the 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 higher, higher educated, you know, Republican voters, more of the establishment types. And uh, it's just not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. I mean, the polling data has been absolutely disastrous uh, in recent days. And, uh, you know, this is something that Trump was obviously pointing out there. But, um, you know, we also had something that I wanted to get to here, but I'll pull this up in one second. It was basically Donald Trump uh, or somebody who works for Donald Trump or maybe just one of his fans who did a recreation of the Twitter spaces with like Adolf Hitler. Uh, you had the devil in there. You had the FBI in there and George Soros. So give me a second and I'll pull that up real quick. All right, here we go. We got it. So this was kind of the main thing that was going viral. Again, he posted this on Instagram. There was a very quick turnover. This was like an hour or so after the event ended. But this is the kind of, uh, I guess, trolling that Ron DeSantis can expect now that he threw himself into this race officially. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Ron DeSantis Twitter space. Hello. Is my microphone working correctly? George, can you just wait while we... Hello. Can you hear me? We can all hear you, George. Can you just hold on for a second? Hilfa, I don't think they can hear me. <coughs> I can hear you fine, George. Just speak to I the I don't microphone. think George knows how to use Twitter. Hello. Uh, can you hear me now? Can I please make my big announcement now? Everyone just... Hello. Just shut up, George. Can somebody just mute, George? <laughs> Dick, could you try not to cough on that? <clears throat> okay, so how are we going to take out Trump, you guys? Uh, uh, guys from the FBI, this is not a private call. This is a public Twitter space. Everyone can listen in. God damn it. Uh, anyway, guys, we uh, invited everyone to this, uh, this Twitter space so Governor Ron DeSantis could... <coughs> everyone just shut the hell up so I can make my announcement, okay? You go, girl. Wait, the devil is gay? So what? Everyone in this call is gay. I have to know every single one of you has a secret gay letter. Guys, can we please just calm down? So anyway, guys, I just wanted to announce that I'm- Okay, I can hear the governor very well. Shut the hell up, Would you please shut up already? I'm running for fucking president, okay? Yeah. We kind of already knew about it. Know, governor. Congratulations, Governor. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, well, that concludes our Twitter space for today. Thank you to all of our... Hold your horses, Elon. The real president is going to say a few words. The devil, I'm going to kick your ass very soon. Hitler, you're already dead. Dick Cheney sounds like you'll be joining Hitler very soon. Klaus Schwab and George Soros, I'm putting both your asses in jail. And Ron DeSanctimonious can kiss my big, beautiful 2024 presidential ass. Trump 2024, baby. Let's go. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know how you deal with that. I really, I really don't know how you deal with that. But there you go. So again, I mean, this is what Ron DeSantis has to look forward to in the next couple of months and, uh, you know, about a year or so until we actually have this primary. But, you know, I mean, again, this was created with AI. I think it was some like probably fan of Donald Trump who created it somehow like miraculously fast. But, uh, you know, Ron DeSantis kind of put himself in a difficult position in terms of his political future. But we've had some massive cope that has been going on amongst the uh, DeSantis and uh, Twitter uh, Elon Musk uh, sphere, basically. So, we had a, a tweet here that was put out by Kyle Griffin. All right, and this is just amazing here. They say, the, the New York Times calls DeSantis' announcement a fiasco. NBC News, a meltdown. WAPO, awkward. Politico calls it horrendous. And he says, I call it massive attention. Top story on earth today. I mean, it, it, does it get better than that? In terms of coping and seething you had like this absolute universally recognized disaster that went absolutely horribly and you turn that around and say like no people are actually like you know just bringing attention to me and they love me and everything is going great right and so of course it was compared to this uh viral tweet from a while back uh by uh timmy c they say elon musk slams dick in car door musk and usually it says musk fans but just musk masterful masterful gambit sir Okay, I mean, this is how him and all of his fans react to everything that he does, even with when it is an abject failure, right, as this case was. We also had some uh, sort of, like, cope from uh, the Ron DeSantis campaign here from Team DeSantis directly. Breaking Twitter was just the warm-up. Help us break Washington next. So, okay, let me tell you something, man. This was not you breaking the internet or breaking twitter this was just twitter being dysfunctional because of how elon musk is running the operation okay this wasn't breaking the internet because you brought in a hundred million people to some event and like the global servers just couldn't handle it no it's just a bad website okay but they're trying to spin this and say they were breaking twitter okay so i mean basically that's it you know again this is going to be an entertaining couple of uh, months here as this race heats up we're going to see more and more absolutely wild attacks coming from donald trump towards desantis i showed you guys the polling data in uh, my last video on this it doesn't seem like it's particularly close at this point so it's an uphill battle for ron desantis and there's just no indication whatsoever in terms of how he is going to actually move up that hill in any meaningful capacity especially not when you decide to sort of like sell your soul to elon musk and uh, by the way, there was just a recent bill passed down in Florida, literally that was signed by DeSantis a couple of days ago, like a day after this event took place, that is uh, shielding liability for SpaceX if they ever have any crashes within the state of Florida. So great work, guys, I guess. But you sold your soul to uh, Elon Musk, one of the most successful fraudsters and con men on the face of the planet right now. And uh, this is the result you get. So, uh, you know, I guess good luck, Rob. Everyone is saying good politic guy has the best politic. Believe me, no one does it like you. Believe me, everyone is saying.